guys, this is Jen over at WorldGenCraft.com and I am back. It's been a while since I've done a video and I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to do a voiceover or if I wanted to do the original. Uh, my original video was 28 minutes long and the more I thought about it, I thought maybe I would go ahead and just kind of cut this down. So bear with me on the play-by-play. -play. We'll see if I can get through this one. Uh, so what I was doing is I was just kind of pointing out the differences. I had posted this card on Card Making USA and Stamp Junkies originally. And my original card, I used the Tim Holtz Distress Oxide inks, which I really loved the way it turned out, but it just... It ended up turning out just really soft and subtle, but since I was going to do a video, I thought, well, I might as well just do Stampin' Up! inks only um, and see how it turned out. And I really did end up loving the way it turned out using the Stampin' Up! inks. Um, I did change the uh, cardstock that I used with the Tim Holtz. I just used the Whisper White cardstock. And with Stampin' Up! I used a watercolor paper. So I'm going to go ahead and just go over the supplies briefly with you all. The Silhouette Scenes, this was a stamp set that I purchased uh, when the catalog first came out, uh, but I'm just getting around to using it. Go figure. Uh, the Sweet Silhouettes dies are coordinating with it, and I just used the tree branch for it. The inks that I used are... Uh, as shown on there and I'll go over them all on my website um, and and that way you know which ones they are. Now I did make my own shimmer mist and I used the uh, champagne mist paint um, and I mixed it in with some alcohol ink and put it in a little spritzer. Um, there was really no uh, formula. I just put in the alcohol and then glopped in some of the um, the champagne mist and that was about it. I did throw in a black uh, marker. So the paper is, it's a uh, four and a quarter by five and a half um, whisper white card ba uh, card stock base. The black is four by five and a quarter and the watercolor paper is three and three quarters by five. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of get all set up here. I was a little chit chatty with my original video. It's been so long since I have seen you guys. Um, I, I was just trying to get caught up, but then I got to thinking about it. I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to continue catching up or just get straight to the project, which was about half the time. Uh, so what I did is um, the sponges that I use are, I think they're from Ranger. Um, I do like them because you can kind of take it off and, and uh, still use the same sponge, like the little base, but then you can switch out the sponges themselves. The uh, two inks that I used are going to be the uh, Mossy Meadow is the darker one, but I'm starting off with Pear Pizzazz. And I'm just using a circular motion with the uh, sponge. Um, I, this card I wanted a little less grass than my original one, uh, but that's all personal preference. If you guys want a little bit bigger area, um, sometimes it just happens. I get a little carried away with my ink, but so I did push, uh, put on the pear pizzazz originally, and then I came back over it with the mossy meadow, and then when I went back over it with the pear pizzazz, it kind of blended out the mossy meadow a little too much. So, you know, just kind of play around with it. I still wanted a little bit of uh, variation between the two colors and um, that's kind of what I ended up going with. I thought that was a pretty good blend. So then I'm going to switch over to uh, the balmy blue, the blueberry bushel, and night of navy. Um, and as I'm struggling to figure out how to open those stamp pads, <laughs> I, I'm not quite, uh, yeah, it, it took a little bit, you know, it's been a while since I've played, so I got to get back into the swing of things. So I went ahead and started with the balmy blue, and uh, as I did that, I'm just going over the whole entire surface of my um my cardstock there, my watercolor cardstock, and, and again starting off at the edge and then working my way in. And as I was re-watching this video, I didn't realize how blotchy it looked, but um, it ended up, after all was said and done, um, it, it didn't look blotchy at all. Um, 
but I was like, wow, that's just kind of not blended very nicely there. <laughs> so I came back over this then in kind of a framed uh, area. So starting off down kind of at the, the lower edge, um, getting in with my balmy blue and uh, the blueberry bushel um, just kind of frames in and leaves almost like a highlighted uh, part for the, uh, the balmy blue. Um, and then I brought in my Knight of Navy again, starting at the edges and then just creating, um, oh, kind of an arch, I guess, with all of my colors. Um, and I do go back through and I reblend with the blueberry bushel and then again with my balmy blue. And I just kind of continue doing that until I get the look that I'm, I'm tr attempting to go for. So, um just kind of starting with that light and then ending up with the dark. And I think that I ended up stopping there. I did bring in my basic black and this was just kind of to frame in the whole entire scene, the whole entire area. Um, so I, I came in it with a little bit lighter hand um, and just barely around the edges. Um, to kind of get that little framed, almost a shadowy kind of look to it. So again, I didn't put a whole lot on, but right now it kind of looks like a hot mess, but I promise you it ends up looking a lot better once we get the tree branch on and, and all of our stamping done. So at this point, yes, I bring in my little stamp platform and then once I realize that I don't need it, I take it back out again because I'm, <laughs> excuse me, I'm going to go ahead and spritz on our little shimmer mist and, um, you know, there's different things that you can use to, uh, to you, to spray this with, um, I kind of ended up getting a little bit, you know, trying to control, if you will, how my shimmer went on there. And then before I got to stamping, I needed to kind of heat set everything just to make sure it wasn't still wet when I went to go stamp on my little girl. So I just kind of hit it with the heat gun a little bit just to make sure it was all nice and dry before I uh, started adding any ink, especially on the watercolor paper. I didn't want anything to bleed. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab out my uh, Tim Holtz um, stamp positioner thingy ma bobber. Uh, a lot of you guys I know have the Stamparatus. I have not yet purchased one. Um, I had purchased my Tim Holtz and I like it. Um, and honestly didn't see the need to purchase uh, one specifically for Stampin' Up! Um, since I had already spent the money on the Tim Holtz. But I have heard amazing things about the Stamparatus and maybe one of these days when I have a little extra money to spare I'll go ahead and get that Stamparatus. So uh, what I did is I went ahead and placed the tree um, so I could place my stamp. Um, that way I kind of knew where I was going to put her. And when I inked up the girl and stamped um, the little image, it didn't, you know, because it's watercolor, it takes quite a few times. So I think I might have stamped this image maybe five or six times, to be honest with you. Um, just so I could get a, a decent amount of that ink uh, down. So I think I can't remember if I did one or two more, but eventually I'll, I'll stop. Yeah, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> and then I moved on to the sentiment. Um, I had actually not washed off the sentiment, so I was kind of a little nervous about putting that down, but um, I just grabbed it quick and added the ink on there and I did stamp that I think at least three times just to make sure I got a pretty good stamped image on there. Yep, there it goes. Well, I think that's the last time. And that looks good. I just love how shimmery it looks. The, uh, the spritz, the shimmer, just to me it made it look like stars. So because I wasn't really thrilled with still how light the stamping turned out, I went ahead and just grabbed my Stampin' Up uh, black uh, Stampin' Right marker and just filled all in. Um, it didn't take too long to do and I absolutely love how crisp 
and and black the image ended up turning out once I went over it with the uh, the stamp and write marker so during this process I just kind of chit chatted a little bit um, just with everything that's been going on with me um, I'm not going to be doing this full time again um, you know I, I did leave Stampin' Up I was trying to get in with other companies and um, you know, ended up working full time at the airport, which took up every waking moment, I swear. Um, and, uh, I, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I've lost my train of thought at this point because I'm trying to keep up with the video. I just couldn't stay away. Um, and I'm going about this a little bit different this time. I'm, I'm going a little bit slower, uh, hopefully making maybe about one video a week. Um, and I won't be doing this, uh, full time, full time, um, like I was, but I did miss you guys and I did miss, uh, the, you know, creativity, um, that I was kind of lacking since I started working full time. So now, uh, when it comes to this branch, I went ahead and I didn't put the uh, glue on every single piece of this branch. Um, I just kind of liked some of the leaves and everything to, uh, I don't know, not pop up a little bit, but just not to be completely adhered to the whole entire thing. So I went ahead and um, just placed this just kind of off a little bit. I didn't use a whole entire branch. Um, but you know, lining it back up with my stamped image. So she didn't look like she was just kind of floating out there in the sky. This is where I think the card really starts to come together when you add that branch on there. Um, and then it, you know, kind of highlights that lighter blue that we used at the beginning. So I just trimmed off the excess and then I'm going to go ahead and throw on some of my foam tape which I was not thrilled with this foam tape that I purchased but I still have it so I'm using up what I have and then I'll probably go back to what I was originally using so so I'm happy to be back doing this it, it's it's been a long time coming it's been well over a year since I put a video together I have actually went on my website to uh, try to figure out how to post again. It's been so long. I forgot how to even sign in to post, <laughs> but, um, so that's just going to get put onto my, uh, four by five and a quarter, uh, basic black cardstock just centered in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring out my big tape gun and put that onto my card base. And that Whisper White is cut uh, four and a quarter by 11 and then scored at the five and a half inch mark. So I just kind of like the way it framed in everything. Um, so that is it. That is the card. Just give it a little uh, quick thing with my um, bone folder. But I really like the way it turned out. And um, I was pretty tickled to be able to put this video together. So look for a few more videos, worldofgencraft.com. I'll have more details on my uh, website. jencerizo.stampinup.net is my Stampin' Up uh, website if you guys would like to come over and do a little shopping. Um, otherwise, I will look forward to seeing you guys on my next video. And thank you so much for tuning in. I sure missed you all. And forgive my dogs, they're barking hysterically right now. But, all right, thanks. We'll see you guys later. Bye.